Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is Arash, aka Achilles from the game, and you are watching SeductiveInstinct.com. I've been getting tons and tons of emails. I welcome them. Continue to communicate. Communication is uh, one of the secrets of life. So, what I decided I would do is answer a bunch of them in this video, all right? So, uh, they're going to give me the questions from behind the camera, and I'm going to answer them, all right? So, here we go. First question is... When you're doing cold reading, how do you calibrate where you're going with it? And uh, what if she gets creeped out? Okay, well, the creeped out meaning what? Like maybe, let me just get both definitions out. One is she's creeped out because you know so much about her, so she thinks you're just a total psychic, okay? If that happens, there's, it's not a problem at all. Don't even worry about it, okay? If everything else about you, if you're warm and playful and smiling and you're not a creepy guy, then she just will be mesmerized by you. If she's getting creeped out, it's because you're being creepy as you're doing it, right? Don't be creepy. If I was like, and you this and that, and you this and that, and you this and that, she, yeah, it's creepy, okay? But if I was just having a conversation with a friend, and I was like, you know what's really interesting about you? You're the kind of person that bam, 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 she goes, oh my God, how do you know? I say, and bam, bam, she goes, well, how do you know? And I say, well, one of my friends, uh, he was my mentor, actually, he taught me all this stuff, and it's become very useful for me, because... I know a lot about people now just by being able to look at them. It's a really easy skill. Anybody can do it. You see, now I'm having a conversation that's not creepy, but it's fascinating. All right, so that's the first one. How do you calibrate? Okay, the, the, uh, the most, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> not intense, but the, 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 the complete. The most complete answer is going to be in a DVD set that I have, okay? It's on cold reading. So you should just get that. I'll go through the whole thing. It'll blow your mind. There's nothing out there like it. However, I do want to answer your question briefly. How do you calibrate, okay? You have to understand IOI, IOD from the mystery method. Indicator of interest, indicator of disinterest. You have to know when a person is interested in what you're saying when they're not interested. Now let's go into cold reading, okay? You have to know when a person is agreeing with you and disagreeing with you. Very similar. When they're agreeing with you, their eyes are lit up, they're nodding, they're... they're a little smile comes and obviously they're they're into what you're saying, okay? They lean forward, they start, ah, uh, right? When they're not into what you're saying, they're, they shut down a little bit, they pull back, they're, they get curious, a uh, kind of suspicious look, the vibe changes, right? So it's a constant back and forth between these two things. You say something right, boom, she gives you the right agreement flow, you move towards that direction, okay, little by little. So you say something wrong, you calibrate the other way. You say you look, you're the kind of person who goes for your goals, and she gives you one of these, like, mm, kind of like that. You say, naturally, though, you do procrastinate, and that's the difference. You know, you do, you are somebody who finds your goals are important to you, but you're very busy, and you're watching her as you're talking, she's nodding, you're very busy. So sometimes you may not reach all of your goals, but what's unique about you is that you do think about your goals, whereas a lot of people are just so caught up they don't think about their goals. You do have some goals that are very important dear to your heart. In fact, when you think back when you were a child, some of those goals are still around in your mind. Maybe you've given up on them, but not fully, because they're still there. You do think about it sometimes. Maybe you see a movie or you read a book and it reminds you of it, right? Boom, that's cold reading. Powerful, right? Question number one. Hope you liked it. Let's go to question number two. What is it? When do you do the cold reading? What phase? Attraction, comfort, seduction, all three. Okay? Just done a little bit differently. Very powerful in comfort. Very powerful in comfort. If you're hanging out with somebody and you start telling them about their palm or their handwriting or their zodiac sign or any of that shit. In comfort, you can go a little bit deeper. You can also keynote while you do it, okay? Also, it can be done in attraction phase. In all of them, as long as it's not done in a way where you're bragging, it's not done in a creepy way, you're fine, okay? People love to hear about themselves, people love to be told about themselves, and in fact, one of the highest uh, important datums in cold reading is you say things that a person wants to hear about themselves, things that inspire them and make them feel better about themselves, right? Because of that, they will keep listening. As long as it's not cheesy and you're not overdoing it, a person will continue to listen to you. It can be done in attraction, it can be done in comfort, it can be done in seduction. Okay, next question. Okay, this is the classic question that comes up forever, and I bet you it'll come up 10 years from now every fucking year, all the time. You get the phone number, when do you text, when do you call? Okay, I don't have an answer to this one, because I've done both. Called right away, waited four days, waited two days, called that night. It's more of a feeling, okay? 
for me, it's like this. If there's a reason to call, then it's time to call. Okay, so I always get the number on a, what's called a plausible deniability. Maybe she's going to come work out with me. Maybe we're going to go to a party. Maybe she's going to come to a photo shoot. I don't know. It's not for hooking up, that's for sure, okay? That's later on in life. Right now, we're just getting to know each other. So the phone number is exchanged, and there should be something the number is exchanged for. You guys are going to now get all to get together and go hiking. Well, see, if that's the case, then you call her that whenever you're about to go hiking or a day before and you say, hey, you know, we're going to go tomorrow. Just want to make sure if you have any people. You see, so it's, it's not a problem of time unless you're thinking, I got the number and I want to hook up with her. That's what gets awkward. Should I call her now? Should I call her? Well, maybe you got her number and that night you're going to go to a party. And the, the plausible deniability number exchange was you both like to party, you like to go out. So you call her that night. We're going to a party tonight. Do you want to come by? You see where that goes? Maybe it's the weekend. So you call her the, right before the weekend, which ends up being two days afterwards. Who the fuck knows, right? As long as you have a reason why you should call her, it doesn't matter when you call her, as long as the timing of your call aligns with the reason. Boom. Greatest answer ever given on this subject. Go tell the world about it. SeductiveInstinct.com. Next question. How do you deal with guys that are angry, they want to fight, or just feeling hurt? Again, a very classic question. There's a million ways you could go about it. One rule I have is I will not fight a guy. Uh, at a club or anywhere for over a girl. It's just not going to happen, okay? It's not fucking important to me. So if a guy is going out of his way to be a fucking dick, I'm gone, okay? Most of the time he makes a dick out of himself, all right? I'm not going to lose my value. I'm not going to pussy out. Hey, man, no problem. Hey, man, why are you talking to her? You know, she's my friend. No problem, brother. You know, I got a girlfriend. I'm here hanging out, okay? No disrespect, okay? You guys have a good night. Turn the fuck around and go the other way. I'll keep macking the night away, okay? If it starts to get... Uh, Really aggressive, I have. Uh, not necessarily in a pickup situation. I've been with my girlfriend in places before where I've seen guys start to get really aggressive vibe towards me and I've just left, okay? But that's the kind of person I am. Now, on the other side of things, I can also fight like a fucking tiger. You know, I've done martial arts all my life and I'm very highly skilled in it. So if I have to defend myself, I will defend myself. If someone's gonna, you know, attack my girlfriend or my friends, I'm, go I'm gonna defend. I've been in face to face with guys who've tried to have confrontation with my friends and clubs and stuff. So uh, I think the, the long-term answer is learn some self-defense skill that's actually usable. Don't go to some cheesy school. I highly recommend Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I would recommend Panjo, which is a style I teach. But unless you're in San Jose, you're not going to get that anywhere, okay? Otherwise, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu would be the next one. Krav Maga is a good street uh, defense. Muay Thai is very good. Even boxing, regular boxing or wrestling, okay? Learn some skills so that if you have to defend yourself, you can. Also, your confidence will completely change when you have that ability, okay? And remember, going to sets, not hitting on girls, and you shouldn't have so much of a problem. Doesn't mean you won't. I've had guys still have an issue with me because so many girls like me, but uh, whatever. You just be cool and surround yourself and go out with a wing, you know? Go out with another guy who can fight too. If it's me and one of my jujitsu friends, it's gonna be rough, rough, you know, they're gonna have a hard time dealing with us, okay? All right, what else? What's the next question? Okay, besides the mystery method and the game, what books do I recommend out there, okay? I recommend any book that has to do with um, your own self-help style books, okay? Um, Anything from Richard Bandler to Anthony Robbins would be great. Um, there's there's an author named O.G. Mandino, Og Mandino, he's a great author. Um, any book on any subject that you find interesting, I recommend, okay? And, and that may seem like it has nothing to do with game, but you're mistaken if that's what you think, okay? The more knowledge that you have, the more you understand about life, the stronger your game is going to be. All right? David Icke is a great uh, author out there. Any, anything, man. I'm telling you the things I'm interested in. I read every fucking thing I can get my hands on, okay? So, any book is good. In regards to what books I recommend in game, there is one, actually. It's called Seduce with Style. Uh, I think you can find that on poalingo.com, okay? Great book on style. That's a really fucking good book. I'm also in there, okay? But that's not why I'm plugging it. It's a great book. And uh, those are the three game books that I know of. I don't know any of the Oh, yes, I do. Thank you. I just remembered. These are the books, okay? Related to game. Sperm Wars, Evolution of Desire, The Mating Mind, and uh, The Red Queen. Got those four? 
the Red Queen, Evolution of Desire, The Mating Mind, and uh, Sperm Wars. Read those four and your life will, your perception will completely change about men and women, okay? Not easy reads though, fair to say. Also, Revelation is really good by the Venusian Arts. Okay, now it's all coming to me. Revelation is one of the greatest books on game. It's actually by Mystery. The pickup artist is, okay, here we go. The pickup artist, the Mystery Method, the game, Revelations, and um, was there a fifth one in the game? I just said, th those are like the game ones. Oh, Seduce of Style. And then on the other side, so you have knowledge of the psychology of game. You have Sperm Wars, uh, The Mating Mind, Red Queen, Evolution of Desire, that's it, it's four. Okay? That should answer that. You're not going to be in the friend zone if you have value, DHV, and you're negging, and if you're keno escalating her. Okay? I, I just don't understand the friend zone. Uh, as I said that, I just realized that that actually, uh, uh, yes, it can happen. It can happen, okay? Um, if you don't want to be stuck in the friend zone, don't be just a friend. Make sure you're doing the game that I did, that, that, that you know, and then you have to be kissing her and making out with her and things like that, okay? If you don't want to be just friends. How do you transition from C1 to C2? C1 to me is comfortable conversation, like I'm having a comfortable conversation with you right now, okay? I don't know you, but I'm having a comfortable conversation, okay? Uh, an uncomfortable conversation would be, if I was talking to you like this and I was trying to sell something and I said, you can do it, that would be uncomfortable, you could feel it. But just, just two friends talking would sound something like this. C1. You have to be able to talk to a girl just like this. You're here. If there was a hot girl here, we would just talk the same way. C1. C2 is a natural transition when in your comfortable conversation, you find something about you guys that is a deep connection, meaning something different about you two than everybody else. Okay? Uh, I'll give you some examples of that. You both have this incredible passion for ancient Egypt. That's kind of rare. Okay, and you both figure that out if you have a regular conversation. Or, uh, she loves dogs, you love dogs. I don't mean just like, like love, 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 right? Or she wants to go to Fiji and you're going to Fiji. I don't know, right? Something that's a connection between you two. Both of your parents adopted you. Wow, that's a fucking connection if I've ever seen one, right? Something that separates you and her from the herd, okay? That's C2, and that, na that happens after you can comfortably talk to somebody, right? First we meet somebody, even guys to guys, you're not comfortable talking. Then you got comfortable talking. After you can be around each other comfortably, you discover things about each other. That's C2. Okay? And then the question is, how do you go into sexual escalation? That happens right from the beginning. You have to have Kino from the moment you meet. Okay? It doesn't mean you're like licking her and shit. It just means you're, you're the kind of guy who touches people. Okay? And then if you learn how to touch, good Kino escalation, she will enjoy your touch. When she enjoys your touch, um, then she wants you to touch her naturally, right? Okay. What's the difference between a seducer and a pickup artist, okay? I think you have to be both. But, here's my definition. I'm sure different teachers will have different ones. This should guide you quite well though. A pickup artist is somebody who can go and do that attraction, comfort, and seduction. They understand there is those three phases. A seducer goes and seduces. You get the difference? It goes right to the end. It can happen sometimes, right? A pickup artist understands we're going to go through these phases and I'm systematically going to get you to seduction. A seducer will go skip all the phases and go right into seduction. Okay? And both can be successful. Uh, but if you want to have a lot of women in your life, then become a pickup artist and then become a master seducer. You've got to be able to do both. So, does game work on that? Yes. It, game works on every race, alright? Uh, that's been my experience. I have a lot of different people in my life and I've used game on them. Now, there may be slight calibrations, okay? And uh, what, what are those? It, she may come from a more of a shy culture. As I say that, maybe you thought oriental culture, that's what I was thinking, okay? She may come from a more of a bold culture, okay? A black race. Uh, depends. Middle Eastern, where my uh, tradition comes from. There's a certain way. However, what doesn't change is if you don't know her, you have to first open up the conversation. After you open up the conversation, you have to demonstrate to her that you're a higher value male than other males around. 
You have to also demonstrate to her you're not just after fucking her. If you do that, she's going to demonstrate to you that she likes you, she finds you intriguing, fascinating. When she does that three or more times consistently and it's legit, then you have to tell her you like her for her. After that, you have to get in comfort with her. Then you got to create some kind of a connection with her. After that, you have to be in different locations with her, including the place where you're going to have sex with her. From there, you have to make sure that if she's a girl, she's going to have last minute resistance, most likely how to handle that. That's the mystery method. No matter what you're dealing with, what race, okay? It might go a little faster, a little slower, a little calibrated here and there. But if you do what I just said, you're going to be more successful with women than anything else you do. That's why the, the mystery method is like the, the base for everything I teach. Because it's the most powerful. You, get, you use game, okay? Friends, I don't know if you've ever been in the situation of a friend who became creepy, okay? Not because they became sexual, but because they called you too much. They were needy. Without you, they couldn't go to the mall. Without you, they couldn't go to the movies. Without you, they couldn't sit at home for fucking 10 hours, right? Th that person started to push you away, right? Uh, the way you make friends is the same way. You, you demonstrate your value. You make sure that you have a good life already. So you're, you're, you're fun, you're playful, you're energetic, you're, uh, you have interests in life, you're a good person, right? And you understand game, why? So you don't creep people out, you're not too needy. Don't be needy, okay? Any kind of neediness is a turn off in any social dynamics. Just remember that. Neediness equals creepiness, and creepiness equals you lose people, okay? So how do you create them? Just go meet a lot, a lot of girls and stop trying to fuck them, okay? Uh, the funny thing will happen when you do that and you do it right, they're gonna wanna fuck you, and they'll still be your friend, you have to have the choice. You have to say yes or no. Because that's what a hot girl has, right? Hot girl has a bunch of guys around her that are trying to fuck her. And she says yes, yes, no, 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 yes. So you become the hot girl, right? When you're learning game from me, that's who you are. You become the 10. You have a bunch of girls around you. I have a bunch of girls around me that want to fuck me. Straight up. I have a girlfriend. I have a bunch of girls around me that want to have sex with me. And they're not going to. By choice. You got it? Uh, that's, that's good. I like that life. What are some resources, articles, or books that have helped me develop my inner game? First one is Manu Tupo. He's dead now. That was my teacher. Eight years ago. He started the whole thing. One thing he taught me was to read. I hated reading before I met him. I was like, read, fuck. But that's because I was forced to read school education books, like history stuff that was not true. Christopher Columbus and bullshit like that. Um, so he had me go read subjects that I was interested in. Like, you go to the bookstore. Some people have never been to the fucking bookstore. Walk through and see what area interests you. Go in there and start looking at the books. Find a book you like and start reading. Okay? So what has helped me? Well, there's some areas of life that I find very interesting. Um, I love how the mind works. So I, whatever I could get my hands on the mind, I did. Every, and I still do. Uh, I love language, so, and they're related. So anything on language. I love fantasy like vampires and werewolves and superpowers and shit like that. Uh, currently, I've studied everything I could about animals all my life. And now currently I'm becoming like a top dog trainer in the world. But I have a lot of research on it. Why? I thought animals were fascinating. They were like superheroes to me, you know? So every National Geographic TV show, animals, anything on wolves, lions, bears, tigers, jaguars, snakes, birds, right? Things that interest me. Uh, so you need to find out what interests you. I love conspiracy stuff, you know. I'm not going to call it conspiracy theories because they're not just theories, you know. Uh, Christianity is a theory. You get the difference, right? Because there's no proof for it. Ooh, did I piss somebody off? Good for you. Um, however, conspiracies, there's proof for them. You can pick up a dollar bill and see a pyramid in the back of it. That's proof. It's right there. It doesn't make sense unless you understand the history of why there's a pyramid with an eye on there, right? So anything on conspiracy I'm interested in because it gives us more truth on why things are around us the way they are. Anything you're interested in, okay? I, I just, I, I learned to research from a lot of theater, a lot on theater. Um, anything that you find interesting, read, read. That's what Mono would always say. He would say, read. You must read. Do your research, okay? So mine is all that continues to go. And that does it. So here's what you need to do. Go out there and game. Speak your truth. Speak your mind. Be yourself. You don't need to change who you are. You just have to get rid 
of the things that you don't like about yourself. The things you don't like about yourself, other people don't like about you either. You see, it's really simple, right? And there's things that you like about yourself and you need to amplify those, make them stronger, okay? And the problem that you're going to come across in social interactions is that you're going to miscommunicate who you are. And so you're misrepresenting yourself, right? And people will have a reaction to the way you represent yourself and not who you really are, okay? And that's where a lot of the problems occur. And sometimes, well, not sometimes, a lot of times, I was teaching here last night and I was looking at the guys that were sitting there. A lot of times people are not honest with themselves. So they really don't deserve a 9 or a 10. Yet they're running around bitching why they don't get a 9 or a 10. Or they don't deserve a million dollars. Or they don't deserve fame. Or they don't deserve health. They don't deserve any of it. They feel like they have some divine right to get it just by being alive. And that's not true. And I tell you where that comes from. It comes from the bullshit of the society now of, uh, you know, I've done martial arts in a long time. And there was a, at some point you would go to martial arts tournaments that was first, second, and third place. Then I remember they came up with this fucking philosophy that everybody who competed got a medal for participation. That's weird. I'll tell you why, okay? It's not equal. The person who wins puts in a lot more time and energy than the person who just fucking shows up that day. You know what I mean? So we have this idea in the society that everyone needs to fucking uh, have the same equal everything. No, that's not true, okay? So the reason why I get tons and tons and tons of women and I'm successful is because I've done my work, I do my research, I've gone through the good and the bad, and I still do it. So I deserve it, okay? And if you deserve it, you'll get it too. But take a good look in the mirror. What have you done? What's your research? What's your actual application? What have you been through? That'll tell you exactly where you are in game. I guarantee it. You're, where you are in your life and in your game is a direct reflection of how you think and your actions. And if it's not, then it goes to the second part. Then that means you're communicating incorrectly to all the other beings. You have one thing going on, but everybody sees you differently. Okay? So... Yeah, we're in a deep mode here at fucking Seductive Instinct today. So, check out SeductiveInstinct.com. You could add me on Facebook. Don't be a creep. I get a lot of creepy messages on Facebook. Whatever. I'll handle it. And uh, what else? Yes, if you know any very beautiful women in the Bay Area, introduce them to me. Peace. Be the best. Fuck the best.